Hello guys, in this video we will talk about strict types and specifically declare strict types in Laravel and in PHP. Recently I saw this pull request in the open source project Find a PR by Ash Allen, well-known Laravel developer and a blogger, and all the changes in that pull request were declare strict types in all the files. And I thought, what is the real practical benefit of that? I know some people use that. I know it's kind of a better practice to be strict. But in what real practical cases it actually helps to solve any bugs? And I asked on Twitter and got quite a few interesting real life cases, scenarios and examples. And in this video, I will show you them one by one. And at the end of this video, you will decide how useful it is to have types at all and strict types specifically. First, I remember that in Laravel 10, there was quite a big hype where Nunu Maduro spent a lot of time implementing strict types all over Laravel ecosystem packages and I had a video about that and I will link that in the description below with examples of why types are important. But with this specific tweet about declare strict types I received these scenarios. So my colleague Modestas showed me this example, let me zoom that in, of charging. So for example if you don't define the value and the tax types it's not clear the tax is 21% as integer or 0.21 as a float. And I tried to reproduce it in my own Laravel project. So this example by Modestas is just PHP, but in Laravel case, for example, we have a service class for some calculations and we call that service methods from controller. So the first scenario is if we don't define any types here, integer or float. And then if we call the same function for calculation of taxes with 21% or 0.21, both would work, just return different results. In reality, it expects 21 as integer, but the results, as you can see, are different in the browser. Now, if we define float price, for example, but tax should be integer, and we don't change anything in the controller, and we refresh, and it still works, but with different results. So what it does, if you don't define strict types, tax will be rounded into int from 0 0.21 to 0. I guess it may depend on your PHP configuration and may cause some warning, but in my case, in default Laravel new installation, it just rounded the float to integer 0. Now, what changes if we had declare strict types in that service class. We refresh and nothing changes. It still works. What does affect if we add declare strict types in the controller in the place where the functions are called? And as you can see now, PHP Storm even underlines that 0.21 as incorrect. And now if we refresh that, we will get an exception internal server error, now I need to zoom out, must be of type int float given. So this is an example where declare strict types in the controller, or in best case, it should be in all files, just to make sure actually saves you from the bug. Of course, it could be improved even with variable names, for example, so tax percentage, for example, would be more clear in terms of just variable name, or maybe some comment in the code would be also valuable on top here. But still, declare strict types is the actual final kind of final frontier, final middleware to restrict this case. Another example in the same project is based on another comment by K. It's about zero or false. For example, let's remove declare strict types again for a while. And then there's another function called calculate price, which looks like this in the service. So calculate price and on some condition it returns false. Otherwise it returns some number. And then what happens, as I understood Kai's thought, so it returns false, and then in the controller that false or whatever is returned from that function is passed to another function, another method. And now what happens, false is automatically transformed into zero and doesn't throw any errors, it just shows zero at the end. So zero with tax. But if you define declare strict types on top, we refresh, and we have, oh, that error comes from the second one, so let's comment that one out. We refresh, and this is the error, must be of type float boolean 
given here. So this is another example how PHP kind of transforms the types between each other, which is not necessarily what we need in real life. Of course, this example is also kind of artificial and probably returning false is a bad code structure anyway. It probably should throw some exception, which should be caught in the controller, but you get the idea. If you have false, it is transformed to zero with unpredictable consequence. I also got a few more comments from that tweet, which I was unable to reproduce actually. So Wendell told the example of UPC numbers with leading zeros. And of course, they may be misinterpreted as numbers, but they should be strings. And then similar example is followed up by add with US zip codes that also could start with leading zeros. So if you don't specify the string for them, then maybe in some case, I was unable to actually reproduce that, but maybe while exporting to Excel, for example, Excel may interpret them as numbers, for example, instead of strings. So declare strict types also can save from that. And a few more comments related to the same thing. If you work with data that is unpredictable, for example, by third party, some API, maybe your colleague, more junior developer or not that thorough with the code. Basically, you don't control the data or the code by other developers. So this is a comment by Donatas explaining that scenario. Also, Exacat pointed the legacy application, which is also, for example, the code from some older PHP version or Laravel version, which worked with PHP types in different ways, maybe. And getting back to the team aspect, different developers saw already threat about declare strict types. And one of the most upvoted answers was about massive symphony projects and our developers have varying skill levels. So it's kind of enforcing strict types and enforcing more rules is kind of an insurance extra layer of rules to avoid bigger errors by less experienced developers. And finally, if you're kind of convinced that you should use declare strict types for bigger projects or bigger team, you can also go a step further and automate some stuff. So Ash Allen in the original repository that I've shown in the beginning of this video, on top of declaring strict types, he implemented the past architectural tests to actually test if all files contain strict types. So here it is, I've cloned down that repository by Ash Allen and in the tests architecture, HTTP test controllers test, for example, have this test expect all files in controllers folder namespace to use strict types. So if we run PHP artisan test on that repository, it all passes, including that controllers test. But if we go to any random controller and remove that declare strict types from top, we rerun PHP artisan test and then it fails. So you can actually automate some stuff from past architecture level. And I have a separate video about it, about past auto detection of ENV, DD and other leftovers, which is part of their architectural testing suite. You can look it up in the past documentation. Finally, finishing the thought about automation, we have a separate course on Laravel Daily about Laristan, which is a layer on top of PHP Stan for static analysis. And one of the lessons is specifically about missing types. So your static analysis tool like Laristan could check if the types are missing. So for example, you have quite a big file with a big function inside and you can set so-called level six in configuration, which would actually detect that some method has no return type specified, also has a parameter with no type specified. And then when we fix that by providing array here, for example, or request here, rerun Laristan again, we'll get another error that return type has no value type specified. And then another fix is to add a dog block optionally if you want to, and then you have okay, no errors. So yeah, this is just one example of automating that type strictness in Laristan. I will link that lesson as well in the description below. So yeah, overall, are you convinced that you should use types in the first place? And then the second layer, declare them as strict types. Or do you have other examples to convince others to use those? Share your experience in the comments below. If you have any real bugs or real stories or real scenarios where type mismatch caused real bugs in production projects. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.